hello everyone good evening i hope everyone is doing great so today we are going to learn another topic in our low code development series enabling field level auditing in pega from app studio so let's first understand what happens in this one so let's say whenever we develop any applications right few of the important attributes okay if that attribute is getting changed we want to keep a track of that okay and also we want to keep a history so that in future we can see the reporting or any dispute happens we can we can see that like who changed the value let's say you are going for a loan amount okay and initially you applied for loan let's say any customer apply applied for the loan for 5000 okay and the case got rejected okay and then again it changed back to uh, like let's say when the resubmitting is happening when initiator is resubmitting he changed that loan value from 5000 to 4500 okay and then customer later on raised that issue that why my a loan amount was changed okay so for these kind of things you can enable the auditing so that you can track who changed that value okay so this this is one example i very small example i gave you okay but there are like many scenario in your like real business use case you'll get this kind of a use case where you want to track the uh, the property or the attribute value whenever it's getting changed so what we will doing what we'll be doing in today's class i'll be first configuring and showing you showing you that how you can configure this where you can see the value what are the challenges you can face when you're configuring and how we can deploy this in the next in moment okay so we will cover all those things okay in next 10 minutes so let's start and go into the pega app studio so here what i have done i have already configured a case type okay where uh, we have a three stages create stages and then loan details and then approve in create stages i have not kept anything much okay just customer details but there is no attributes a blank when i'll cl click on create it will go to loan details and there we can fill few values okay like uh, loan type loan amount loan purpose or loan terms like four or five attributes i have already created and that is under object loan details and then there is an approve and reject okay so this i stage i kept so that once i'll submit and when second time when i'll reject it right i'll change the value and i'll show you okay and this is the alternate stage okay when i'm rejecting it's going just doing nothing it's just changing back to loan details so before doing anything let's see how our flow is working okay so this is a very simple like first stage create i have not added anything i'll just click on create and then go to this stage so you can see that here we have few things right so here i'm selecting um, my loan type is home and then i'm selecting let's say loan amount is 5000 loan purpose i can say for home because that's what we had like selected a loan type and then loan terms let's say i'm selecting 20 years or whatever here i've just like I kept up attribute okay and leave about this this one this user account okay and i'm submitting so when i'm submitting okay what happens is it's going to the approver okay and um, here approver can see all those details though i have not configured that for the approvers to see that okay here i can configure in the case details like to show all the details okay so here let's say for some reason approver is rejecting this loan now this time it's it, it got reassigned to that initiator let's say the other person who has created that request okay and now he's resubmitting okay based on the feedback from the approver this time by mistake or something happened in place of home type he selected personal loan okay so in this kind of a things okay and he also changed that loan amount from five thousand to six thousand and he submitted it now approver also approved that loan okay and then finally when the disbursement is happening okay let's say customer is raising an issue no i have applied as a home loan right not as a personal loan and the amount is five thousand not six thousand so how we can attract that who changed this value okay here there is only interactions of one user okay one approver and one creator like what if the multi user multiple user is working on these applications right in this kind of a scenario we need to track that okay so how we can track that so in pega what pega does it okay in the case type role itself pega gives a feature okay here you can see that uh, auditing okay so pega gives us in the case type role itself auditing so you can enable the attribute and also you can select that for what all attributes you want to enable that okay so you can select enable 
field audit here you can see that so once you enable it will show the list of attribute which you can select that you want to track okay so let's see if i'm selecting loan uh, in loan this one right i selected so loan uh, loan details is my object so property type of page and inside it we have this four okay so let's say if i'm selecting loan amount purpose and loan terms for these three i want to track so we can save it so the moment we will save it what will happen is okay few things will happen in the dev studio i'll show you okay pega will create a class okay under fl audit so you just need to search with fl audit fl audit so you can see that this is my work class so so the corresponding your work class pega will create a audit work class class group okay class group sorry so if you see this is the work is the class group for the audit see here so this is the class group okay like we have our right if i if i remove this one we'll find our class group okay so just it will append fl audit and it will create a class group okay similar to your class group so see and then it will just add, add that fl audit fl let me yeah so i'll select this one so you can see that and under we have one case type loan okay so that is where here it's showing loan okay so pega will create this class and also pega will create one declare one data transform where all the attributes whatever we have selected okay that will get added okay so let me go to the data transform and show you so even though see here you can see that field level auditing right even though we have done it from the app studio and from the case management pega created a rule okay field auditing and all, added all the attributes for which we want to track so py is enabled true okay so you can see that this this data transform is created in the same class loan class and first it it said that okay py enabled is uh, py is enabled yes and then all the property which we want to track so loan details under loan details we have loan amount loan purpose and loan terms now this gets executed from a declare a trigger okay so let me see if i can show you so declare trigger will find under decision so you can see that under this class okay pega creates a, created a declare trigger okay and uh, here the trigger activity is px field level auditing okay so immediately it will execute whenever the commit whenever that commit save means whenever the commit will happen okay uh, then it will uh, trigger this declare trigger okay and perform this one so how it works internally is okay pega doesn't do in real time okay what it does it just queue to queue processing okay so it queues to a standard queue processing okay and then uh, sorry a standard queue processor and this is the activity which gets executed pz process fill auditing okay and then it will add in the history table okay or that fl audit table for the tracking purpose like let's say uh, your value was 20 and it got changed to 40 i will show you okay but first i'm just explaining that what happens in the background okay when the declared trigger fires or when whenever any attribute gets changed for what pega does is pega creates a declared trigger declared trigger will execute this activity and queue an item to a standard queue with this activity and this activity is responsible to add an entry into the fl audit table okay fl audit table related to your class group so if i go here we have a table and so it created right pc audit and qtm loan plus underscore work so this is my application just again added here also like we have a pc work table so here also it got get created and just it added a fill audit okay similar to our work class so it created a table so now this this activity will be responsible to adding the data to um to that fl audit table now if you want to trace okay anything so you can trace this queue processor a standard queue processor and you can give this activity as a name because whenever you try to trace a queue processor pega will ask for a activity name and you can trace that so now we understand that how it works okay so to make it enable first you need to get to go to case type and then go to auditing tab okay tab in auditing type you need to select the attribute for which you want to enable the audit okay and then pega will once you say pega will create a audit class fl audit class okay and then it will create a declare trigger okay inside the declare trigger it will add the activity out of the box activity px field level auditing activity and then also it will create a data transform where all the attributes will get mapped whatever you want to do but you don't have to worry okay you can do everything from the 
app studio only so let's go back to the app studio again and whatever the attribute we have selected we need to see one more important things we need to see here is that here the list of attributes like right so let me create attribute in the dev studio and show you okay what will happen so let me create attribute property and i'll say let's say loan account something like that i'm just creating and i'll create in that same loan class click on save so now let's say i want to do the auditing for this property as well if the loan account is changing okay so i refreshed it now i'll go to the setting and i'll go to that auditing tab but still you can see that that attribute i'm not seeing so the reason is you can only enable the field level tracking okay on the property which have been marked as a relevant okay and by default if you create any property from the case type rule or from the app studio it will by default get marked as a relevant but i went ahead and created from the dev studio okay and and hence it was not marked as relevant so the property was not coming so if i want to track okay you need to mark this property as a relevant so sometime you can face this issue that let's say you were in your team people have created so many property and you want to track on those okay but when you're going to the case type rule and trying to enable you are not finding that property okay and the reason could be is that your property is not marked as a relevant now i'll go to the app studio again and refresh and see if you're getting that property so let's go to that settings and go to the auditing and here see we can see that loan account so we can do on this one as well tracking now we need to add this property somewhere in the ui also okay so let's add it so that we can add some value and test it and user account i can delete so to add that property we already have so i can just search and add it to the view loan account save it so now we understood the concept okay let's go back and test that okay so let's create a case now we created a case and here and to test that you don't have to go to the next you can keep saving like uh, like let's say if i'm selecting home loan and giving and the 5000 okay loan terms 20 and then here 1 2 3 4 5 if i'm giving so save and commit it so the declare trigger will trigger when you are doing save and commit okay so whenever we click here this save right pega commits as well so you don't have to go to the next stage you can for testing you can click on save and test okay now let's change the value and say again so 5025 and this time a b c d e and save it again now question is where we can see these changes okay so what happens is in the history only right we have this view history under history only pega have a field history tab okay here we can see the results okay so see here we can see that first time we had the value okay old value was blank okay for that uh, loan account and then new value is one two three four so it's tracking from the beginning okay initially it was blank and then so under loan account whenever you're trying to track object you'll get a ui like this so you'll get a link loan details inside that you can see so we have enable on loan amount and loan terms so initial value is blank okay and then we change it to 5020 okay and then again uh, when we change right second time okay we change it from 20 to 25 and and then the value for that uh, amount we change it to 5000 to 6000 okay and then a loan account we change from 1234 to abcd so you can see that it is working uh, correctly there is no issue here right so let's say if you want to use this field history somewhere in your case type right here under here or here you can just go and grab that sections and plug it okay so this is how it will work now uh what kind of issue you can get okay so the first one i explain is that you may not able to find out that property okay when you are going and trying to configure from your case type role okay and, and so the reason is the property is not mark, marked as a relevant and don't try to go and directly add into the data transform which i showed you let's say that property is not marked as relevant and you are trying to go and directly add in data transform that can create a problem or it can create confusion so always go and try to uh, change it from the case type rule okay so this is the first issue you can get the second issue you can get is okay 
that when pega saves that right so let's see the instances few instances of this one so i'll go to that fl audit class and click on loan so you can see that pega uses a guid okay if i go to this class and see the definition so pega uses a guid okay as the class key no sorry let's go to this one so in class type rule we can find out automatically generate that okay so what happens sometimes pega is using guid right sometimes what happens is you need to open this class and set that py guid right or to enable that property goes to true okay i have faced this issue if i come here right so this is like py auto generated key so you need to set true for all the classes okay belongs to classes as well like like the like this class so this class is a belong to class class group okay so let's say you have loan home loan and few other things right so sometimes if it is not working so you can open this class in activity in some test activity and you can set that py auto generated that attribute to true then it will start working so that is the second issue the third issue you can get is that you deployed in in that qa or in any high end moment and it's not working and the reason is you need to include these two classes so this work class work group class and this class group so this two class group you need to this two class okay this is the till work and then this one you need to include your product role okay and then also you need to include the db instances in your product role so db instances you can find out here database table so i will show you see so you can see that okay history uh, so this one fl audit right so this one you you need to include in your uh product okay and deploy in the next in moment if you do not do then again it will it will not work okay so let's revisit that okay so what i showed is that how we can enable that okay and uh, when we enable okay what all things happen in the background okay so it creates data transform it creates a declare trigger okay and then also i showed you okay that it doesn't like kind of a save or insert actual actual things it doesn't do directly it okay it just queue it okay because it can impact performance so that is where the that trick declare trigger activity just queue to a, a standard queue with with the activity pj processing field auditing so if you want to like debug something you need to trace a standard event with his activity okay and also i explained the other few issues that like you need to do marked as a relevant and then you must add the class group and the div instances and promote it to the next in moment so that one also i said uh, so these are the one or two issue which we can get it so i think this is it for the enabling this okay so you can try and let me know okay um if you're facing any issue i can definitely help with this and also i was reading this article and looks like this is still not available in the the cosmos react okay so this will still only work so you can see that only standard pega um, platform applications support field overloading applications that you built on cosmos react do not support this feature okay so if you are going into the cosmos react you might not get this feature for now but definitely pega will add it in the future so that's it for this class thank you have a good day bye